There are as many different experimental configurations for proton NMR spectra as there are spectroscopists that run them. Local workflows and requirements mean that everyone needs something a little bit different than everyone else. Occasionally, even the same person might need different conditions at different times or with different samples. One of the strengths of Agilent's VNMRJ3 software lies with the ability of the users to customize the interface to suit their personal needs. The list of the requested experiments on a given sample is constructed in the study queue in VNMRJ. The building blocks for the study queue are studies that can be selected in the experiment selector by a simple mouse click. A study may be as basic as a single experiment or pulse sequence, but may also consist of a complex collection of requests, including an arbitrary number and combination of simple studies. Study collections may prove extremely handy when the same experiment combination must be repeated on many samples over and over again. One of the primary tools a spectroscopist can use to customize the interface is known as a study clone. Study clones can be very simple, such as a carbon experiment that is pre-configured to run overnight, or a proton experiment that has been parameterized to collect data for quantitative analysis. Alternatively, a study clone can encompass a collection of experiments that are each customized for a specific task or class of compounds. Let's look at a few examples of how a study clone can be used to make the user's life easier and more efficient. First, we'll consider a simple case, such as the need to create a proton experiment that is optimized to provide proton spectra suitable for extracting sample concentrations. First, we will select the Clone a new study option from the Study Clones menu under Tools. This moves the software into Submit mode, preparing for us to build a study. It also replaces the typical Submit button with a Save Study in the Study Queue window. Next, we will add a default proton experiment to our new study and then double-click on the Proton node to customize the parameters. For a more quantitative dataset, we might want to increase the D1 delay to 25 seconds, change the observed pulse to just a 30-degree tip angle, increase the Fourier number to 256K data points, and apply a little line broadening, say half a hertz, to the data before processing. We'll use the Save button to save those changes. Now, when we select the Save Study button, we get the Save Study Queue pop-up. This shows us that our queue consists of just the proton experiment that we've optimized, and it presents us with the tools to add that experiment to the experiment selector as a new study. We'll use the tab name pull-down to create a new tab called My Studies, and enter a name for the new button in the experiment selector, such as Quant Proton. Using the Save Update button now creates our new tab in the Experiment Selector and adds the Quant Proton button to that tab. We can test our new clone by adding a proton to the current workspace to show the default parameter set, then selecting our new Quant Proton Study Clone. Notice that the value for D1 is now 25 seconds as we wanted and the pulse width is set to a 30 degree tip angle based on our probe file calibration. Our processing changes are also in place, as we can see it in the process parameter panel. Study clones can also be used to create more complex lists of experiments. For example, we could use the new study button to move the software into submit mode then populate the study queue with a list of experiments we want to run on a series of samples. Note that we can add a previously created study clone to our new study if we so desire. We'll also add another couple of experiments, such as carbon, a gradient HSQC, and a gradient HMBC with adiabatic refocusing pulses to our study. Each of these experiments nodes can be customized as we'd like. So let us just customize our carbon that takes with the current parameter set 8 minutes and 40 seconds by doubling the relaxation delay and the number of scans to be acquired. When saving it, 
the corresponding experiment time is changed to 26 minutes, reflecting the customization that we have just done. Now we can use the Clone Current Study option to convert our new study into a clone. Like before, we get the Save Study Queue pop-up. This time, we'll select the same My Studies tab as we used before to hold the new clone. We'll name our study Quant Explist to signify that it is more than just one experiment. And we'll click the Save Update button to store our new clone. Once again, the interface is updated and our new experiment button is ready to use. We start a new study and request our freshly made study collection. All experiments with the saved customization appear simultaneously. It is worthwhile to note that the experiments created using a study clone are fully customizable after they are loaded onto the study queue. Even though our new study clone button gives us the same parameters that were set when it was created, we can still choose to change any or all of the experiments in the list if we so desire. We have seen how the VNMRJ interface uses the idea of a study clone to customize the interface to suit a particular user's tastes and desires. This feature is very powerful and allows every user to make the system as efficient as possible, accommodating individual research requirements.